Hello everybody, this is Westbound from Westbound Music. I just watched Archie's video about creating templates to get you started so you don't lose your ideas. His is very, um, yeah, very um, useful, very basic so that you can lay down some quick ideas like on a notepad, almost on a <laughs> audio notepad quickly. I recently uh, remodeled or adjusted and revamped my templates because I always like to have the full orchestra um, pre-map to tracks available so that I can select and deselect as I go along which is an approach works better for me but each to their own. I'm gonna walk you through it and you let me know in the end if you liked mine as well or if Archie's serves you better. It's not a competition. We're learning from each other. I hope. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna look to the left because that's where the large screen is. I hope you forgive me. Um, first of all I have to say this is my template. Um, there's a few audio tracks for um, effects and uh, voiceover like for example when you're scoring the picture you want to load a movie from the arrangement section here this one is empty now because uh, it's supposed to be a template with tempo variations and so on and certain key and uh, yeah that is uh, I'm gonna link to a video that um, this describes the basics about scoring to picture with uh, markers and scenes and cues and so on. I think Martin has a very good one out there. Okay, um, and then, then there's the instruments and I have all the sections, the violins, one, two, three, and so on, all the instrument sections into uh, grouped into stacks, summing stacks actually. For example, here is the violins one and uh, I placed them as we, as I learned from the BBC SO Discover, the free version of their library, which is what got me started in 20, was it 2020 when the QTube started? I think, I think that's when it was, right? And I didn't have a budget and I didn't have, you know, anything to start with. So I downloaded this one and st it still serves me well. I have a few for payment, uh, you know, paid, um, libraries now from Spitfire Audio and Native Instruments mostly also but but this one here I like still because of this picture here which is really coming in handy in learning how an orchestra is uh, you know the seating floor plan of an orchestra on an act in an actual concert hall so I'm still you know falling back resorting back to that and that's how I group my instruments from left to right listening from the perspective of the audience and the concert hall in their seats um, and then the placement we're going to show in a minute so this is um, the violins are you know, around the choir master piano celesta could be here up front next to the choir master usually that's for the soloist I'm not quite sure whether I'm happy with this placement I placed my piano and celesta somewhere else but you know this this is a, a basic idea of, of the standards then um, behind the violins are the woodwinds with uh, flutes and clarinet, oboe, bassoons. Then to the right there is trumpets and trombones and tuba. To the left the horns, horn section, and also a little elevated usually, you know, above the, the rest of the orchestra. And then all elevated should be the percussion, like uh, untuned, in tuned percussion, this is the tuned harp, celeste, they are tuned instruments, and then untuned like uh, timbales, cymbales, uh, cymbals, and and all kinds of percussion instruments. Okay, so now back to this uh, track here. This is violins with articulation, and uh, they are mapped to, because I'm using complete control, or contact actually inside of complete control, uh, you get to have parameters from the instruments, even from third-party instruments, mapped to your uh, MIDI controller, to Native Instruments MIDI controller. And um, let me show you how this works. Um, for example, run. See that? So if I operate the second handle here, let's bring it up in bigger here. This is the second knob from the left. If I turn it up, it creates dynamic, and then the other one is for expression. So you have a fade in and fade out. It would be nicer with faders, but 
those work knobs work as well or you could have a paddle for example you could map into any control that's available here or if you have a different MIDI controller you can map into those elements sometimes they have drum pads and so on which this one doesn't have but it's also got um, the transport section mapped to by default to these buttons here so if I record and start and stop this works all from here which is really really super comfortable so that's the secondary aspect but the main thing here is um, the key switches to the left this green section here oh, let's switch this off the green section here to the left these are the key switches for certain articulations like long tones is the default then if I press C sharp um, what is it zero to make it a little louder then uh, pizzicato and tremolo uh, it's kind of loud so this is really useful you have to press them only once and then you can play both handed if you like that better for example if you lay down kind of uh, block chords with uh, with the cello or something then this would be better okay um, these are the sections one last word well before we move on um, to routing one last word on complete control because I think if you have a way of of getting it and working uh, with instruments that are compatible to their NKS standard which um, is basically the protocol that standardizes this uh, use then I would re recommend it highly because as we can see in a minute you get to load even third-party instruments like here example Project Sam I also have um, Orchestra Essentials through the sales run last Black Friday last year they had both packages for half the price and then there is a lot of instruments that um, I have from Native Instruments all these libraries are assembled in here and the good thing is you get to pre-listen to see just by, just by clicking those and this saves you so much time when you're uh, looking for sounds this is incredible it's just so helpful uh, how do I get this oh, okay yeah so that's um, complete control I think I mentioned it before all right routing uh, like I said every track is sits on a um, is associated with a bus and those go into a stack for every instrument section which is a summing stack there are two uh, versions I always use the summing stack and then that stack goes into another um, track or auxiliary track actually which is all the instruments assembled into one channel strip in one auxiliary strip actually so you have a kind of kill switch or if you could if you like for example wanted to automate certain parts for the entire playback where the dialogue gets really soft but music is supposed to be there then um, that helps you know in, in, in instead of ha having to get on the stereo some and needing to automate that then you have a dedicated track also you could use it to have some further signal processing like limiting or uh, this here is a um, like a mild compressor once more you have to be careful not to route the dialogue and the original uh, sound effects through that that is usually not um, you know not not appreciated so make sure of that with the routing but the basic idea is like every instrument section sits on a summing stack the summing stack goes into a dedicated auxiliary strip and that auxiliary strip goes back into the dedicated instrument output and the instrument output then goes on the stereo out and the stereo out is this here I just used a uh, preset from you know preloaded preset from logic which is called classical I augmented it with two additional channel strips for metering which is uh, the multimeter for you know the analyzer analyzes the um, frequency um, range of, of the entire playback and the Ghania meter gives you a visual feedback on the stereo panorama 
or a 5.1 if it's if it's that so that comes in pretty nifty also another plugin which I think for mastering is super useful is the game plugin I have it in you know loaded into this channel strip here uh, but not activate it if you do then you have such nice things like convert to mono which is for example if you're not scoring the picture but doing uh, pop music then this helps a lot uh, in order to identify whether it's your, your mix is going to sound the way it's supposed to sound on on cheap um, earpieces and so, and so on or you could invert phase left to right and you know change around so it's it's really helpful okay I think that is basically my idea for uh, as far as templates are concerned um, like I said I like to have everything at hand all the sounds that I usually use for orchestral this one here also offers a few um, electronic sounds with preloaded with libraries from native instruments which I find super super helpful and useful for uh, I use them a lot you know for even for horror or you know what have you and uh, I think uh, nowadays um, it's more often the case that we're moving away from classical that that is not so much requested any longer much more electronic or uh, even other genres so anyways I hope you found this a little useful and this is just an idea what uh, what you could do and if you did then please come back I think I'm gonna do a walkthrough through my la latest entries at some point I have a lot of other things going on at the moment but uh, hopefully I get to the get around to that. So this is Westbound for Westbound Music. Thanks for dropping by and um, appreciate my new subscribers. Thanks for Martin for running this uh, Halloween Hangover Challenge. <laughs> I don't stand a chance. I think the entries are so great, you know, but we're learning from each other. I hope. All right. This is Westbound. See you soon. Bye-bye.